to predict how much carbon dioxide might be affecting our climate in 50 years, I first of all have to predict how much carbon dioxide will be in the air in 50 years. We can start to see these changes in our temperature and sea level rise and other things, and we're concerned about where that's going to go in the future. OCO2 is NASA's satellite that's dedicated to measuring carbon dioxide. We're going to measure carbon dioxide all around the globe, so we get these global measurements, very, very precise of carbon dioxide. Measurements like those to be made by the Orbiting Carbon Observatory, too, are absolutely critical for us to understand how carbon dioxide interacts with something called the global carbon cycle. When we burn gas in our cars or we burn coal for power, we produce carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere. Half of the CO2 that's being emitted to the atmosphere remains in the atmosphere. The other 50% is being absorbed by the oceans or the terrestrial biosphere. So those are almost in balance, but as we add this carbon dioxide to the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels, some of the extra is going into the ocean, some of the extra is probably going into the land. But we don't know exactly where that is. We'll see every two weeks or so how much carbon dioxide there is left in the, the atmosphere. And we call this watching the planet breathe. These are things we clearly have to start understanding. We want to actually manage the carbon dioxide buildup in our atmosphere. We've discovered this terrifically important additional contribution we'll be able to make from OCO2. Plants grow and they glow. So when they glow, the instrument's actually going to be able to see this glow. They bring in blue light and they re-emit yellow and red light. Solar-induced fluorescence measurements gives you an indication of how well a particular region is absorbing or being a sink for atmospheric or carbon dioxide. Imagine what this can tell us about the yield of crops from the great food baskets of the world. Suddenly we could have a new direct measure of how productive those food growing areas are going to be. And the two in combination, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and an indicator of how effective plants are in taking CO2 out of the atmosphere, it's just an, an impossibly brilliant combination.